Hi guys, this video is about covered calls and a covered call tracker that I made. Um, I have been seeing some comments about covered calls from other forums and it seems like people are starting to realize that it's a potential way to earn an income off of it um, if you have the shares in your long stock. So this tracker it kind of makes those assumptions that you have the shares, at least 100, that you want to hold the stock long term but also that you're okay selling above the strike price or at the strike price and that you're going to be holding the contract until expiration so not buying it back and then kind of playing with the difference there so with those assumptions uh, covered calls are a way that if you have a stock um, you can sell it and you collect a premium for it uh, for a certain period so you're saying that you're going to be selling a stock at a certain price and putting it on the market there but they're going to pay you for that in advance of that predetermined price so you've probably seen the classic image of a covered call a couple lines uh, to me it's a little it's super basic but it can be kind of confusing if you're seeing it for the first time so hopefully uh, I have a visual here that might help some people not sure if it will uh, we'll see but here's that visual so the dotted blue line is the stock price and that can fluctuate any at any point uh, this again this chart is based off of this BMY uh, contract here so all the details here kind of line up with the chart so it assumes here that say you owned 100 shares of BMY and you bought them for 55.71 so 55.71 is your cost basis so if this is the stock price it's trading always above 5571 until you know the very end but but at any point here if you just own the stock you didn't have a covered call uh, you could sell it and you can gain all this upside even even in this gray area uh, you can gain all that upside uh, with the covered call if you were to write it say at the beginning here it would be a certain price um, you'd be selling it and you'd get a premium in this case it's a dollar thirty which turns out to be uh, $130 because you have the times to buy 100 shares uh, for your contract. So again, every contract is 100 shares. So that's basically saying you're going to be getting upfront $130 because you want to sell uh, your BMY shares at a specific price and date. So the strike in this case is 65 and the expiration here uh, at least was November 17th. So in the chart you have your cost basis 5571 and you're setting it to say sometime in November I want to sell it for $65. You know that's the price you want to sell it at. Because you get the premium your actual sell price is 6630 because you're getting a benefit from that premium. So in November if the price is below 6630 you still kind of come out ahead because you have the benefit of the premium and the spread between 55 and uh, uh, 65 uh, but if it's below that you still keep the premium however if it goes below 5571 because you get the premium you kind of have a buffer and that's what your effective buy price is it kind of reduces your cost basis in a way um, you're not buying more shares you're kind of adjusting the price based on the premium you've gotten uh, if you look at any of your say brokerage or trading sites they're not going to show that effective buy price uh, that's something you can keep track of yourself in order if you want to play this out uh, multiple times say if you want to just keep writing calls for BMY uh, between this spread because it always kind of trades within a certain range you can use that effective buy price to think about it in terms of a uh, total strategy because you'd be factoring in your returns uh, and the capital gain that you would be getting from it and you can kind of offset the two but if it goes below 5541 anything below that um, that's pretty much like you'd be just be holding the stock and keeping those losses uh, until you sell it so it's just unrealized downside so that kind of makes it I think pretty clear as to what the risk are uh, if it goes past your strike you don't necessarily lose a lot of money it's just that you lose the opportunity to sell at that price 
the only time you really be losing is if it just goes below your cost basis or really your effective buy price. Um, that's when you'd be, you know, losing money. But it's if you're long the stock, it'd be the same like you're holding the stock. But because you sold the contract and you got the premium, you've in a sense lowered your cost basis by the amount of the premium. Uh, so hopefully that helps explain it a little in a little more detail. Um, this whole tracker is based off of um, the covered called basics from Investopedia. So I, I have the link here so you can definitely check it out. I think it's it's very helpful uh, as a basic intro into covered calls if you want to think about it in terms of an income strategy. So the example, again, and the example I have here too is um, for that BMY. But I added a piece here as well um, that's not in the video that I think kind of helps to understand uh, it in terms of an income strategy. So it's the amount you make per day and the amount you make per hour. Uh, the per day piece is about, it takes your total credit and then divides it by how, how long you're actually uh, holding the contract for. And with a covered call, time is kind of a, your enemy here because the more time there is, the more uh, probability there is for it to fluctuate, you know, not in your favor, either into more possibility that you cannot capture or into more uh, unrealized gains that you're going to have to sit with until it comes back to your cost basis. So thinking about it in terms of the amount you get per day and per hour, you can kind of think about it in terms of a minimum wage. So minimum wage, say the average might be like 10 to 12. If you're writing a covered call and you could see that the amount you're getting per day and per hour say more than a minimum wage it might help you decide in terms of an income strategy so this is a strategy i'm in right now is dpw 12 10 20 22 and it expires uh, january 15th 2021 the strike for this is five dollars and the premium on it was 90 cents and the cost average, I've been adver averaging down, but the cost average at the time I think was 412. So all the orange pieces are the things that you're gonna be entering in and all the yellow pieces are formulas. So you can just copy those and paste them down and it will calculate what the current price is, your total credits, your effective sell by how many days, and then your effective in return and things like that. So your total credit is based, again, what you're going to be getting. So when I wrote this call, I got $270 that day, which I think is pretty good since um, you can see the amount per day is $7.50. So, you know, that's that's not bad. It's like one hour of minimum wage of work and per hour it's like 90 cents. So not great per, from a per hour basis, but from a per day basis, I think that's pretty good. If I look at it from a premium return perspective, uh, for the amount I put in for uh, owning these shares, I'm getting an 18% return on that. So that, to me, is great. 18% uh, is hard to get in the market. Um, and I'm able to get it in one day with a very low um, cost of capital. So the cost of capital on this was about you know, uh, $1,200. So that, that's not bad. Looking at Your effective return is pretty much... Um, if you sold it uh, at, or if, if the option was executed at the effective price. So again, that effective price would be uh, this piece right here. So in that example, uh, my cost basis was 412. And then if the effective price was 590, the share price would have to go above 590. And once it does, I'd be capturing that 43% return. That's if it goes above that price. If it doesn't, then you know, I'm, I'm stuck with the stock. But I could sell it if it's still above my cost average. So, yeah, th that's the covered call tracker. Um, hopefully it helps so, uh, people understand some of the basics. Or if you know the basics, hopefully it helps in, uh, or at least providing the framework to create a more complex uh, covered call tracker. Um, in addition to this, I added uh, two tabs here called data and chart. Um, typically, if, you, if you're if you writing a covered call strategy, you wanna be able to see how the, your data is trending or the price is trending. So you can write the call 
at prices that probably won't execute. So that's what these two tabs kind of uh, set out to do. What it does, it pulls the five year weekly prices for any particular stock and then calculates the standard deviation, the interquartile ranges, the median, and uh, the max and min. And then it takes all that information here and charts it out for you. So this particular stock was uh, Canopy Growth. And this is the price trending for it. <clears throat> but then the straight lines kind of give you some sense of uh, central tendency. So where the stock tends to kind of fall price-wise. Um, I have some definitions as to what those uh, lines mean. So, but you can see here the do two dotted lines are the mean and the median. And you can see that for the most part, it's around $23. So if you're gonna write a covered call, maybe within this range or within the dotted line range, um, you'd be safe in, uh, in if you wanted to keep uh, the, the stocks and collect a premium on it since it doesn't pay a dividend. Uh, but you can see here there, that's it. You can see here that there is a chance that it can break above any of that and uh, you know, you'd be missing out on all this opportunity here. Some people look at this and think FOMO, fear of missing. Yeah, so I hope that helps. Um, again, it's a simple tracker. It's nothing too complicated. It doesn't do any pulls and I'm hoping that um, you can add to it if you want to, if you're doing a covered call strategy. Um, and again, uh, I do have another video that's going to be talking about uh, all the issues with this Yahoo Finance option, options uh, tab and a possible solution for it. It's not the best solution, but it's one that I think gets us in the right direction since we're not able to do it in Google Sheets anymore. So that's it, guys. I hope this video helps, and thanks for watching.